<clears throat> Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. Uh, today, my special guest is Ed, and Ed and his wife came out to our advanced grazing school, and I was intrigued with uh, Ed's profession. It's a profession that's lacking in this whole regenerative movement. We need more of them. Ed, you're a processor. You, you cut meat. You and, your, you and your wife started this business. Would you tell me a little bit about your business? Yeah, we started it about 20... Five years ago, started out as a homeschool project. So we started out with processing deer, and then we got into processing beef, hogs, lambs, goats, smoked meats, and it's grown from there. And as I look at life today, we need a lot more processors. It's a good move to have homesteaders, and the end product is a food to table product, but we need those folks that need to process these animals and it's not a dirty job but it is a very useful job a very um, relaxing job something that i think young people should take a very serious look at because we're in a time of life when we may have to fend for ourselves and if we have to butcher our own beef or our own lamb hog whatever it may be also have a man that works with me that's 78 years old would like to teach people what he knows before he passes on. He says, I cannot teach what some passed away. So he knows all the Jewish cuts and he's very, very useful. Worked all over the United States in different butcher shops. He's a very knowledgeable man of all the cuts of almost any animal, I would say. Well, and you told me earlier that he could, he was about the most useful with a knife and the way he went through a, a pig and his deer, you could, he could cut up a deer, what was it, seven minutes? Seven to ten yeah, minutes? Yeah, just a little short of seven minutes, he can take all the bones out of a deer, make the cuts, and put the meat that is needed for Hamburg into the grinder. Wow. He sounds like he knows what he's doing. He does. And this is a guy that, if you, if, so you're looking for a young person that wants to learn how to process an animal, you've got the, you've got the spot to do that. You're looking for somebody like that. Yeah. We're looking for people that would like to mentor and learn it. Uh, what, what part of Pennsylvania are you we're in? We're about 40 miles south of Pittsburgh. We're down in next to Morgantown, West Virginia, Cumberland, Maryland, and Uniontown. It's all in that corner there where all those states come together. That's beautiful down there. I just came from uh, Morgantown this winter. Uh, that was it's just a beautiful area down there. How, how long have you all been located down there? I've been there all my life, 64 years on the farm farms been in my well my dad bought it in 1959 and as far as i know as of to this date it has never been sprayed with any chemical wow that's we, phenomenal we try to do a little grass grass-fed beef and rotational grazing that's how i met greg and i do hogs in the woods uh, okay. moving them like you do cattle keep them moving keep the dirt turning and keep the grass coming yeah and your wife uh she came to this, this school with you and she's uh really involved in your processing plan as well yes and she takes care she takes care of some of the packing and of course the building and all of that nature but she also is a, a natural health practitioner which helps out tremendously even with animals we got sick animals we have what they call a uh, electrodermal screening machine that we can screen the animals and it will tell us what the animal actually needs to balance the uh, capability of its uh, uh, growth and all those things that helps it to perform progress on, yeah perform well I, I listened to your wife in the talk a while ago and there was times that we, we were talking about uh, the health of the animals and the gut flora. And she was, man, I mean, she, you can tell she knew what she was talking about. The pH in the gut of an animal is extremely important. If the pH of the animal is not right, nothing will be right. Even in what, if they eat the best food that there is. If their stomach and their pH is not right, then you don't get the weight or day of age. Uh, you don't get... It just doesn't perform like it should. Right. And so I heard her say that you all were feeding just a little bit of apple cider vinegar to your animals. We do. 
we do feed a little apple cider vinegar. And for warmer, actually, and she could tell you, we put soap in the water. There's a certain type of... Hey, shut that off. There's a certain type of... There's a certain type of soap that we use. And we put that in the water maybe once or twice a week sometimes. And that helps with the getting rid of the worm situation. Okay. So we don't use anything other than natural yep. chemicals to do our worming and the health issues for the animals. So You are what you eat. Right, exactly. So if you're a young person today and you're wanting to pursue a career in being a butcher or, you know, working at a processing plant like yours, what would that look like? I mean, coming to, what, what, where would that start? If a young person wanted to do that. Well, if they come, if they would come where we're at, it goes from start to finish. We've got plenty of box cutters, we call them. And that is after it's processed in the main plants, it comes to the stores in boxes and then they cut out what they need. But starting there, you go from kill to the freezer. So you learn how to kill them, you know, learn how to take them apart and each section apart as needed and each cut apart and where it comes from and how it's to be trimmed so that you have an end product that your uh, customer would like. Okay. Um, if somebody was wanting to talk to you about learning from you and your other fellow that works there, sound like he's just a wealth of information, how would they go about getting in contact with you, Ed? Well, you could probably text me on my cell phone number would be the easiest way. Okay. Which I, you don't need to give that right here. I will get that from you, Ed. And that his uh, text number, uh, I, do you have a web, do you have an email address? We do. Okay, I'm going to... Folks, at the end of this, I look under descriptions. I will give Ed's email. And that way, if you're interested, uh, you can get a hold of Ed and talk to him and his wife. Um, the reason I'm doing this, folks, this is the missing link. We don't have enough processors out there. There's a lot of people wanting to come back to the land, but we don't have enough Ed's. And, and mom and pop stores. And so this is a, a weak link. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, it's a very, very weak link. We've got hundreds of people wanting to raise things. And some folks are raising more now because their neighbor wants food that they know where their food source is coming from. Right. And they're raising them, but they cannot get them in to be processed. We're booked out right now uh, just a little over a year for you to even get an animal in. Yeah. And that's not only here. I don't care where you go in the United States. It's the same. Same deal. Well, that's awesome uh, that you took time. Ed, thank you for coming today and the last week. Yeah. It's been great. I've got some good visiting with you and your wife. And I uh, wish you both the best. And uh, folks that <clears throat> watching this, if you're interested in learning a processing trade, how to break down animals, uh, look under the description, get a hold of Ed and his wife. And uh, all the best to you both, guys and, and ladies. And... Uh, Hit the subscribe button on the way out, folks. Have a good one, and uh, we'll see you down the road. Thank you, Ed. Thank you.